Hi everyone, I'm Ben, and this is the Board Game Blueprint. This week, we're going to revisit Ken Franklin's custom laser cut acrylic episode with some of my own experience as well. So building off of what we've seen before, let's go ahead and jump to the table next door and see what we have in store. As I've hinted at in a previous video, I'm a bit of a Dungeons and Dragons player. And so I had the great idea of making some fan art based on an Instagram artist, the Sketch Goblin, to bring my campaign's party to life. So here is the Dwarf Fighter Grantle, and I've gone ahead and created him in Illustrator, which is a vector-based program. I like this one because it allows me to save out directly into an SVG that I can then optimize using Component Studio. I have a couple nice Easter eggs with some feedback from the player. I've gone and created what is a suitably accurate representation. Now, I want to make sure I can make the most out of the material, so I tried to scale the character as much as possible. In fact, I actually worked on the character in a separate file, and then put them and the base into the GameCrafter laser cut template. And here is Grantle arrived! As we can see, yep, it's the entire 4x8 piece of acrylic that the laser cut file is on, with the registration marks where the acrylic whoop, is fixed by. And let's go ahead and open this up and see how everything comes out. So before we attach the figure to the base, let's go ahead and just take a quick look at some of this awesome detail. If you recall from my file that this star background was much less opaque than it is now. I lowered the opacity manually, and I guess the Game Crafter doesn't actually print at that value. So if you wanted something really, really light, you have to put in the hex code to do so. But it really captures all the small details, like that little snail that we hid in there before. And the colors look just about exactly right. Now this is on the clear acrylic, as you can probably tell. And so when we flip over the back side, we can see on a not double side printed file that the ink is visible behind. So that's a pretty neat effect too, if you weren't going to use, again, a color acrylic. So as we fit the figure onto the base, we can see that there's a little bit of wobbling. And the reason why I believe that is, is because I didn't account for the kerf, which is to say the thickness of the laser as it's cutting through the material. Because the kerf is two ways, in a sense, the reason why the pieces kind of were falling so easily out of the sheet, there's a little bit too much space so the pieces don't lock in together. If I were to redo this again, what I would probably do is go ahead and make these gaps or widths slightly thinner, perhaps even subtracting two times the kerf on the SVG. But I'm going to go ahead and when I gift this over to some friends of mine, pitch that this makes for easy and quick assembly and disassembly. <laughs> Overall, it looks great and it's exactly what I wanted. Hopefully my friends feel the same way. And that's just a quick look at the custom acrylic that we had seen how to do in a previous episode by Ken Franklin. So if you want large, imposing game pieces of your own, different characters in your world, or machines of some kind, you can absolutely make them real through the Game Crafter. Our most observant viewers will remember that in a previous episode, I also showed off some custom laser cut acrylic using an opaque color, that is to say, a white flavoring for the fan expansion to Dungeon Drop. But hopefully this showed a little bit more about maybe what goes into the process for a potentially clear material that you might use in a future design. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so that you can stay up to date on future content like this. As always, I'm Ben. This has been another episode of the Board Game Blueprint. And together, let's build something great.